more is better, right? So I wound a new coil. This one's uh, about 185 centimeters long, which is uh, the longest I can wind on the with my bench and the current setup. Um, it ended up with about 4,000 turns, which is 80 ohms of resistance, and turned out to be about 14.3 millihenries. Um, I didn't end up making a time lapse of making it because it, I wound it over the course of quite a few days. Turns out I could only do a, a couple of hours at a time before my thumbs got too sore. So I hope you appreciate that I suffer for my art or, or something. Um, I asked a friend who for some advice on the primary and he said that basically the maximum voltage multiplication I would probably get is if I had a single turn which I thought was pretty funny but um, yeah he's, he's right I guess in that respect and he said that I should try and make it as wide as possible so that I get the magnetic field that's affecting as many of the secondary coins as, as possible um, so one flat single turn and so I started from there Right, so I got out the version 1 of the lightning machine coil again because um, I wanted to have a play and uh, this one is we've got here 1159 turns turned out to be 4.17 millihenries and about 7 ohms resistance uh, it's pretty much a meter long and I'm able to get arcs across it from it between these two electrodes here which is uh, well, I don't know if this is going to turn out very well on the camera but I have to take my word for it it's 220 centimeters so that's probably somewhere around 200,000 volts um, give or take it's done at 50 Hertz and I know there's a lot of ionization of the air going on between the electrodes but before the arcs actually form so potentially it's a little bit less than that it's definitely quite a lot though uh, and I've also made myself a new spark gap so this is basically two doorknobs on a couple of screws but it's um, actually performing quite a lot better than the old one that was just a couple of uh, well, M12 bolts I think um, so yeah, I'll show you this in motion, and then I'm going to have a go with the rotary encoder, uh, encoder, rotary spark gap. Right, so that was pretty good. Um, this is the new rotary spark gap. See, I've put a, a new, a gear, well, a geared rotor on it. So the little one is um, 24 teeth and the big one is 120, giving me 5 to 1. So instead of spinning at 50 hertz, this should now be at about 10 hertz. Um, it'll be in sync with the AC, but I haven't bothered trying to tune the, the rotors. Honestly, I'm not expecting much out of this. I think I'll be much better off with this setup when I put the diodes back in so that I can charge up my capacitors and hopefully they'll have a bit more charge in it by the time these come around and fire it off. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a go with just the AC just to see what happens. Okay, well that actually ended up working significantly better than I thought it would. Um, this is about 170 centimetres, so it's still a little bit shy of the other, and you could see when it was coming in and out of phase, and occasionally it would strike it just nicely and get a big fat arc, and then it would just go back to ionising air, but yeah, not bad. Now let's put some diodes in and see if we can trap some charge in that capacitor.
Alright, so I thought about setting up just the straight rectifier, but figured, ah, why not? I'll just go straight for the doubler, because that rectifies it, puts 40,000 volts across my capacitor. Got her all hooked up, and let's see how we go. So I tuned this spark gap so that it um, only just fires. And it's a little bit intermittent, which means that it's pretty much getting to peak voltage before it does trip. And I'm not even going to bother putting any lights out for this one. It's still a bit pathetic, really. It's struggling to arc, you know, missing occasionally, so that's about right. But And the gap I've got here is... Uh, I don't know, I'm guessing about seven centimeters. Eight. So more than I'm putting in, but still pretty pathetic. So, hmm, more thinking. <laughs> 